Hello, this video has been produced to show an installation of the magic heating box from a plumber's perspective. Our plumber Jim has over 25 years experience in the plumbing industry. He installs the magic heating box for the installation company and he was so impressed with the product that he bought a box and installed it in his own home. Jim has an unvented gas-fired central heating system with water cylinder, radiators and underfloor heating. He therefore has three zones. So let's start by asking Jim what impressed him so much about this product so that he actually installed it in his own home. What attracted me was obviously after meeting the inventor and seeing the passion that he's got with this system and then when you analyse it by putting in pumps on it, extra pumps on it with a six metre head. We're also taking the motorised valves out and then increasing the flow by 70%. It stands to reason that the radiators are going to get hotter quicker, the boiler's going to turn off quicker because of it and when you analyse the system you can see why the boiler can be turned down, thus saving you a lot of gas. Before you uh, start the installation Obviously once you've got it drained down, we got the power flush unit and give it a good power flush. My existing system was an S-Plan Plus, whereupon I had three zone valves, one pump and just a shunt pump for the underfloor heating. With the Magic Box, we've got three pumps on it now. We've got one for the central heating, one for the underfloor heating and then one on the primary return back to the boiler. Therefore, we're getting a lot more flow rate. The logical place to put the, the heating box is obviously a central location uh, as near to all the other pipe work as I can possibly get it and in this particular instance I've got it right in the middle of everything which is a perfect scenario really. The original primary flow had a pump on it here, we've taken it out, rerouted the, the flow to the cylinder via a motorised valve, we've also put a bypass in with a wheel type, we then come straight to the top of the magic heating box with an automatic air vent. From there, first thing first, we put a re return with a six metre head band aid pump on it back to the boiler. We then got two tappings for the central heating, a flow and a return with a pump on the flow or the return, it doesn't really make any difference. We then got another tapping, a flow and a return the underfloor heating again with a pump on it. In this particular instance it was easier to use this return as opposed to one round there. It really doesn't make any difference where the flow returns come in. The most important thing is that the primary flow comes in at the top and a return for the boiler goes down from one of the lower tappings. Other than that, top one's a flow, bottom one's a return. This is the primary flow, straight into a motorised valve, which is operated by the cylinder stack. Half of it goes through the motorised valve, the other half goes straight through the gate valve, which in this particular instance we leave fully open, therefore getting maximum flow rate straight into the magic heating box. The existing programmer was here, so with all the wire in there, it makes sense just to replace it like for like with all the wires there. On the back of the unit, We've then got our live neutral earth in, which is just our supply. With zone one, we've got a live and a neutral. The live goes to the cylinder stat. When that makes a circuit, it then livens up the motorized valve, which then opens up. Zone two, just send a live wire to the room stat. When the room stat makes a circuit, it livens up the pump. Zone three works the same way as zone two, but all three of them systematically turn the pump on on the primary return. Primarily checks when you've filled the system up is to make sure that all the lock seal valves are open fully, thus utilising the maximum flow rate from the system. And then once we've got the system up and running, is to check that the primary flow is at 60 degrees. The other things are just the basic heating system checks, i.e. topping up with chemicals and bleeding the radiators. At a customer's house, obviously after commissioning the system, I then run through the manual with the customer, the nuts and bolts of the system and obviously filling out the warranty card. Mm -hmm. 